So I, I hope that we'll come back to the next session. And I hope that's what you had, you guys. Yes. Yes. So can you give me the one for two to four? Two to I mean four to one. Can it be long? Yes, uh, I think this one might not be that very easy to shorten it. It will just be long. Okay, can I try? Yes, yes. You can talk as you try. Um, if S1 is equal to zero and S0 is equal to zero, then F is equal to one. Zero. If? S1 mm -hmm. is equal to zero mm -hmm. and S0 is equal to one. And S0 is equal to zero. It's equal to zero. Then F1, F is equal to I0. Then, then F is equal, is equal to I0. I0. That's very correct then. Else if. Else if. S1 equal to zero. Um, S1 is equal to zero. And S0 equal to one. And S0 is equal to one. Then F is equal to I1. Then F is equal to I1. That's perfect. Then? As if. As if. S1 is equal to 1. S1 is equal to 1. And S0 equal to 0. And S0 is equal to 0. And F is equal to I2. Then F is equal to I2. That's very correct. Else. Else. F is equal to I3. F is equal to I3. That's very good. You have a good program. Uh, now, can, can, if you look at the truth table that we have here, it also basically describes the same, but I give you a shorter truth table, uh, the one for four to one, even this one, you can have a short one, but the one I'd given you actually, the one I done S0, S1, or S1, S0, and then we had uh, F, that's a truth table that you can be able to use, it's actually correct, it's okay, it's a shorter one. Uh, please know that uh, from that table, uh, when, when you are talking about a uh, one to a uh, two to one mocks, we get this kind of uh, diagram from this Boolean expression. And uh, this Boolean expression is supposed to be given by, uh, let me rewrite it. The truth table for uh, two to one will actually be given by F is equals to S because we used S for the other one. Um, S bar I zero or S I. Why? Because 
uh, when f is one here, you move to the input, you get zero, one. Because s is zero, i zero is one. So you basically put s uh, bar i zero. That's how we get that expression. Then uh, this would be i one. Then now when s, if you look at the next one of the output f, you move to the input, you realize that i one is one, and s is basically one. That's why we have uh, s and i one. Please note that the Boolean expression will be given by this, uh, of which you can implement using an inverter, one AND gate, another AND gate, and an OR gate to the output. So all those are implementations that you can have for your multiplexer. You can have it in hardware form, like this. You can have it in mathematical form, that is the two to one. You can have it in pseudocode form, which is given here. You can also have it in program form. And if you have to do uh, the program for Arduino, what do you think we need to have here for the for these two to one marks? What do you think will be the the program? Somebody can try to give us that program. Should be a very easy one also. If s is equals to zero, then digital write is low. If uh, into brackets s is equals to zero, down we have a digital write low. Digital write. We'll take 13 as our output because it's just one F and uh, you're going to have it as low. No, it won't be low. It will be, it won't be low. It will be what? I. Yeah, it's I zero. Please know that it's I zero. Because you are transferring I0 to F, you don't know what is inside here. It could either be 0 or 1. And if it's in digital form, that's how you write it. And I hope you are getting it. Every person is getting that. Yeah. Yes. What you do? Digital rights. Mm -hmm. I won. I won. That's very correct. So if we have a zero here, it will go. If we have a one, it will go. So this is basically the code that you take uh, when you're implementing your multiplexer using Arduino. And you're going to have a select input, which is one. Then you have two inputs, which are to be selected, I0 and I1, uh, which will be going to the output F. Uh, and our output F will be implemented in uh, digital pin 13. So if S is zero, of course, uh, this we're going to use a button switch to implement, where if you press, if it's not pressed, then the value that's going to the output will be I zero. If it's pressed, then the value of I one is going to go to the output uh, 13. It's just as simple as that. Uh, you can try and do the one for the four to one multiplexer. But I think at some point, not at some point, we have to do a practical later, and I, I think we are going to do this. So we managed to do it, hoping so. I don't know whether we did the Arduino other last time. Do we do? Or we only did it? Uh... Yes. So today we are going to do the Arduino implementation. But that's the much I can talk about the multiplexer. Now let's have a look at the, the multiplexer. That's our next device.
So the multiplexers. These devices will do the opposite of the uh, multiplexer. And uh, as you can see, what we had at the output now goes to the input. And uh, what you had at the input goes to the output. The select lines remain. So it's a device that will take one input and uh, take it to many outputs, depending on the select lines that you have here. And uh, the relation between the outputs and the select line is given by two to power m is equal to n. The same relation we had for uh, the multiplexer, only that this time n are outputs, they are not inputs, and uh, m will be the select lines. So similarly, if you have two outputs, then you have one select line. That's an example which is given here. And uh, if I have uh, four outputs here, then I expect to have uh, uh, two select lines to select uh, where this input will be going to the output. Please note that this device can also be given another name, and the name is a distributor. Why should you call it a distributor? Who can guess from the explanation I've given? Why should it be called a distributor? Because it's uh, inputs and input to many outputs. Yeah, it will take this input and distribute it to many outputs according to the select lines that we are given here. So we'll take an example of design a one to two uh, demos. And I want to do the mods will be having two outputs, F0, F1. And uh, we just have one select line. And uh, we have one input. So that will be the block diagram to implement uh, that demultiplexer. Uh, please note that you can do a truth table for it. Where you're going to have your select input, you're also having your input, the actual one that you're going to distribute to these outputs. And uh, our outputs are given by F1 and F0. So this is what happens. Mm. I think I might be required to do that a truth table. Uh, I want I want to shorten that truth table. So I'll do another one here, a simpler one, just like I did for the multiplexer. And um, I would use S not uh, not S zero, so I also use I, and I also use F one as well as F zero as our inputs, as our outputs. So when S is zero, please note that your input remains I because that's what you are distributing. But can somebody tell us where the I goes through? Where does the I goes through to? F0. It goes to F0. And you need to put your F1 to be 0 because it will be picking nothing. So you give it 0, but you give your F0 uh, an I. Uh, then what happens next? What should we put in the next uh, line? One. When S is one, that's correct. Then I remains I. Then what do we put at F1? One. Put I. Yeah, we are distributing the input, which is I. And therefore, when we have when you have the select line being one, it takes our input to F1. Otherwise, the, uh, the F0 output remains uh, zero. This is actually a very simple representation of this device. And that's how it's supposed to look like. So that truth table, this one makes it a bit easier. And if you explain it from the uh, diagram viewpoint, you realize that when S is zero, then this line is connected to F0 from I. That's in the case where S is zero. 
and uh, um, when s is one our i moves down to uh, f1 so that's how it works basically uh, in fact you can even put some text here and indicate that uh, this is zero for s so you note know that that's actually our s we are dealing with and this will be uh, one for s so that line that's what it gives us uh, that will be an explanation that uh, when s is zero just have your switch connected because it's an hardware you are switching connectors from i all the way to f0 uh, but when s is one connect our switch from i all the way to f1 so you move the switch downwards just like what we had for the uh, multiplexer by that time now the switch was connected in this way and this way where this was the output and this were the inputs so inverted then your select line remains that same 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 uh, now if you look at the expressions f0 is said to be s uh, s bar i where are we getting this from just look at your f0 go down you find a one here then when you move to the input you actually find that you have i which is one and then you have a zero uh, is zero so please know that the s will be bad but the i you just leave it and when you move down with the f1 uh, because the two outputs will be appearing then you're going to have one one where s will be one and i will be one but this time they are separate if you look at these two equations they are the same ones we had for the, the mod, uh, for the multiplexer but this time they are separated uh one for f0 another one for f1 uh the one we had for the multiplexer they were combined together so that's what you can also be able to see uh, makes the difference between that device so i have a question yes why is uh, i bar for f1 oh for f1 i is bad let's see well that's not correct this, this this i should not be bad it's just the i we are taking out so it shouldn't be bad uh okay. thank you for noting that um so there's no bar here so please take note of that there's no bar just an i you are transferring to the output and then through the explanation you can see we are distributing an input to go to a given number of outputs according to the select lines uh, that we have so I, I, I want to give you a, a small exercise uh, and i want you to do for me a, a one to four a one to four the multiplexer uh, first of all start with the diagram which looks like this and then do for me the truth table and that truth table i want you to use this type don't use uh, don't use this one uh, don't use this one sorry use the one i shortened and then from there uh, you can give me uh, what else do you require here the boolean expression so also do for me the boolean expressions for a one to four demon flexor that should uh, take a very short time please two minutes can be enough try to do that
So uh, this is what we have for a four to uh, a one to four. So I'll draw for you the diagram. And uh, it will appear like this. So we just have one input and uh, four outputs. And then two uh, select lines, which you can label. And uh, this will be our I, just I. You realize that we still have one uh, input. Then we have um, uh, the I zero. The next one is I one. So isn't it F zero and F one? Oh, sorry, that would be yeah. The, the outputs I have, not I. So that should be F zero. Then this is our F one. And then next we have F two. And uh, finally we have uh, we have F three. And uh, our select lines will have our S1 remains S1. And then we have S0, it's our select line. Then inside here, we just have a one to four at mox. One to four. Uh, the mox. Just write it as uh, D uh, to represent the mox. So you are done with the diagram. Then, uh, if you look at the truth table, I can just modify this one uh, to give us. The one that we are dealing with, please note that our I remains the same, but this time we change, we're going to have two select lines, S1, and we also have our S0 there. Then I remains I, then uh, we will have how many outputs? There are actually four of them F3, F2. F1 and F0, those are our outputs. So, and these are our inputs. So the first one will be, we have zero, zero. So we have zero, zero. And uh, our I remains I. 
capital. Mm, then what do you put here? At that particular point, what do you indicate? F3. Zero. Zero, that's correct. Then? Zero. Zero, that's correct. Then zero again. And finally, you have? Then I. Yeah. We'll put I. That's correct. So the next one, you can just copy. And you paste it here. And then what do you change here? Uh, is zero to one. I remain the same. Then we change our I to appear at F1. And this is zero. So similarly, we just change this to uh, one zero. zero. And then our I remains I, but this time I will appear at F2. That's capital. And the rest will be given by zeros. This one is zero. And finally, we we'll have one, 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 I, then our F3 changes to and uh, finally we have a zero there and that's our demote flex that's how it works actually out and we have to do the expressions what do you think would be our expressions so the boolean expressions we start with f0 should be equals to s1 bar s1 bar that's correct s0 bar S zero bar, that's correct. I and then I, that's perfect. And uh, please note that uh, you do up to F three. Then we can just do all of them because we just need to copy this to make it very easy. We just copy that. Then I paste here, and you realize that it, this becomes F one. Then what you do with S is S1 bar S0. S1 will not be S1. S1 bar, sorry. S1 will be S0. S0 is the one you don't bar. And then for F2. S1 S0 bar. Yeah, S1. Then S0. S1 no bar. S0 bar and I. Then finally, what do you have? S1, S0. Yeah, for three, you remove the bars and you'll be left with uh, this. The various, uh, it's basically a very clear representation of the demote flexor. If you look at the explanation that I've given you for the demote flexor, um, can you guess how we use it in the computer? Somebody who can try. To store data in a specific memory location. Yeah, um, I think that is correct. Uh, this is what happens you have your data has been processed then you have very many devices which you want to store or which are free to store your data or they might not be free uh, but you have registers assume that these are registers which are given out here and this is your data that's coming from a given bus so you can pass them through a remote plexer to decide for you which memory this data can go to can it go to F0, can it go to F1, or to F3, depending on S1 and S0. S1 and S0 are conditions. Please know that these are conditions. And uh, these conditions, in most cases, come from the control units. And uh, from the control units, they go up. Please know that the control unit will be controlled by the operating system. And from the operating system, we realized you can actually uh, get these controls from the application software. 
and from the application software you go up to the user so the user you send your instruction through the uh, application software those instructions will go through the operating system the operating system passes those instructions to the control unit and the control unit brings those instructions to the particular uh, points which are like these ones for controlling hardware and these devices that you are talking about here. I have a question. Yes. Did the same idea is in uh, switches and routers? Yeah, it will be also for routers. Uh, please know that it's not only routers and switches, it also goes to um, these devices that we use to, like on TVs, uh, you can actually be able to get your, your information going to a given TV. Yeah, you can receive a signal. Uh, of course, it also works with the select, uh, the multiplex as well. But you can also do multiplex. You can, somebody is getting us data and you distribute it to many TVs out there. Yeah, but in this case, the slight difference is that you'll be distributing your data to a given point based on uh, uh, some select lines. But it works in a similar way, the routers and also the switches. So that's the demultiplexer for us. Uh, the next concept is usually to do a, a single code for the two to one to two. Yeah. But I think I will, I will ask you to do that when you go for a break. So for now, I would want us to deal with the encoder as our next device. So we have the encoder there. And uh, what do you understand? When somebody is talking about an encoder, what do you mean by an encoder? Or maybe it can make it easier for me to do the decoder. Let me see here. Um, in fact, let's do the decoder because the diagrams I have here I can reuse them. More everything that I have here I can reuse. Eh? Let's talk about the decoder first. And uh, can somebody remember what we did about the decoder at some point? It changes what to what. Digital to analog. Hmm? Machine language to natural language. Yes, it basically changes machine language to our language, human language. That's in terms of uh, uh, binary to decimal, basically. That's what it does. And uh, please note that. This time, the difference between the uh, decoder and the multiplexer, that's what we can say, is that uh, you are using this n is equal to 2 to power m, where n are the inputs, and m, uh, where n, this time, for a decoder, n will be the outputs, and m are the uh, inputs. So you have a few inputs, then they will be having very many outputs you are decoding. Uh, so if you look at um, an example of, uh, I will start with a, a two to four. Two to four, because you are decoding two to four. And I put here, so I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with a two to four. So the diagram will appear like this, two to four. And I call it decoder because the D remains the same. Uh, please know that this time you are going to have two inputs, uh, which you can call input um, zero, and the other one can be called uh, input one. So we also do another input here, and we call it I one. And I will draw its line. And uh, please note that when you are dealing with a decoder, these select lines are no longer there. So 
the select lines are no longer there, but that diagram looks exactly the same as what you would want to have for a decoder. So the next thing we look at is the, the truth table, uh, which is also given here. And I would want us to slightly change it to make it a decoder. Uh, we, we've actually said that we are changing binary to decimal. So I want somebody to tell me what you expect to have here. So please know that these select lines usually go and they will change to I1 and I0. Just get it very cleanly uh, because it's very easy basically to implement this. So we have I1 and I also have I0. And I remove the eyes. These eyes will go away. Even this one will go away because we have replaced them uh, with uh, the I0 and I1. Mm, they should be and just indicate there. Please know that, let's now fill in this table. When I1 is zero, I0 is zero, we are changing decimal to, binary to decimal. What are you going to get? You get a one at F0. Because F0 is what you are supposed to be getting. And then for zero one, which one do you put a one? F1. Uh, for one zero, just change one zero to decimal. What do you get? So, two. So you put a one at F two, and then for one one, you put a one at F what? F three. And this gives us a true table. Just know that we are converting what we have here to decimal, and the decimal equivalent, we activate the value at that point. So if we are talking about three, activate three down, the rest are zeros. If we are talking about zero, activate, activate zero, then the rest are zeros. That's F0. Uh, the Boolean expressions will be slightly different. I think we, I will ask you to get them because of time. Can be able to generate that for me, and also please get me the the set of code. Then you get me the set of code for the multiplexer also as 